right then, today is something really weird and interesting. And this is why I like Cone, because Cone do these interesting things. With Cone, you don't just get the same couple of models. You get a wide range of different models and lots of weird variation and different bits that make Cone interesting. And as well as that, you get the rare one-offs, the really unique, odd things that Cone do every now and then. And this is one of them. And this is just so different to other lift companies, such as Otis, where with Otis, it's pretty much just Gen 2 nowadays. And there's only like three models of Gen 2. The little tiny shit ones they often sell under other brands because they're so nasty. Then you've got a bog standard one meter second and a slightly better, but still not that good, 1.6 meter second version, which is often put into far too taller buildings. But you just get those same models and they don't have any variation. It's just boring. When with Cone, as well as the Eco Disc being a great bit of machinery, it has lots of variations to them and they're so interesting. And in this video, we have a first generation Eco Disc, an MRL. MX10, so it's motionless model, but in a motor room. Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they use the MX-18 motor room eco disc? Well, that's because the MX-18 motor eco disc came out later. That came out with Cone's new eco discs to supersede traditional lifts that had a motor room, which came out of the MX-20 and the MX-18 being much bigger, more powerful eco discs that shook up the market at the time for being big, powerful lifts by MRL. In this video, the eco disc we're looking at is the first generation, right back at the beginning. And back then, there was no motor room versions of eco disc. So how they put it in the motor room? Well, they attached the MX-10 to the tracks, just like I normally do, then put a frame around the tracks to then attach that into the motor room. That is weird. You can clearly see this isn't designed for a motor room. In a way, it still has its attachment to the tracks like it's MRL, but on a separate, this little tiny bit of track with a frame around it, just so it can stand up in a motor room. That makes no sense. It is weird and interesting. So let's start this video off by taking a ride of it. And let's go and take a look in the motor room. And this motor attachment is weird and ever so interesting. Now let's take a look at the logic. Now this is the first generation logic because it's got the pull out chip. The chip with all of the settings on it pulls out. And you can actually pull out a chip to bypass cone to piety restriction. So they've got a restriction, 10,000 trips, you have to go back to cone. That's to cone to try and keep maintenance contracts very devious, something I really do not like about cone. Although probably the only thing I don't like about cone. And what lots of people found out you could do is take out the chip, reprogram it yourself in a chip reader and reduce the number of trips and unlock the proprietary restriction. So later on, Cone then had the chip soldered in to stop people from doing it. But in the first generation, you can pull it out, which is what identifies it. Another interesting thing about the first generation Eco Disc is it's got menu two for VF settings rather than menu six. Menu six superseded menu two. So that the logic can work with loads of different VF drives and you get different variations of menu six depending on what VF drive you're working with. But on the first generation, you use menu two, meaning that the logic is fixed to only work with one individual VF drive. And that one individual VF drive the Logic could work with was actually unreliable. And on this particular lift, it's been replaced. And interestingly, you get the double clunk when it stops, where it applies each brake individually. And that's where the Logic's had some weird bodge considering that this first generation can only work with one individual model of VF drive. I had to do some bodginess, I'm guessing, to get to work with an updated VF drive when they updated that drive because of its unreliability. And for somehow that has led to the double clunk. And that's why you get on some first and second generation eco discs. Anyway, let's now make the lift move. <laughs> And let's free fall it. Safety 
make it. And let's drive it on inspection. Decalibration. And now to another one in the building, which is pretty much identical to the first one. No, it's also menu lock, sadly. Oh, that's a shame. Thank you.